Hello, Majesty Sussex Report, beautiful people. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us on this 1st of April podcast and um, Easter Monday. So happy Easter Monday to each and every one of you as we continue to bask in the light of Easter, a time of profound reflection and um, joyous celebration. I hope all of you um, had a wonderful Easter Sunday and um, hopefully it was filled with moments of peace, spirituality, and, um, you know, eating lots of chocolate. (laughs) Because those those little chocolate eggs are actually quite delicious, I must say myself. I I, I didn't eat a lot of um, the eggs chocolate. I actually... I um I have one here. Well, I have four actually in 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 my kitchen. Um, there is these chocolates that I absolutely love, and I usually buy every week. I buy four of them, and each day I allow myself to have a full one. Um, well, that and Hagen Dazs ice cream. Um, nom, 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 nom. I am just, it's like my favorite thing, um, ice cream. I can't have ice cream in my freezer or fridge for too long. Uh, so, and also the other thing is that I, well, my new thing, because I tend to just eat it all in one serving. So if I have like four little um, things of ice cream, uh, uh, trust me, as soon as I get home, one is gone. Next day, gone maybe two the next day. So if it's gelato or ice cream, I absolutely love it. Anyways, um, hope you're all doing great. Um, What did you think about the uh, new intro? I hope you like it. I, um, as I was thinking of, you know, 1st of April and uh, activating now the membership, um, part I thought okay I'll I'll do sort of a new intro and a refresher of a, a, a fresh new intro and also the other thing I I sort of had to reevaluate um, so the intros that I usually do are very thematic per each podcast and they tell a sort of mini story. Uh, within it's a sort of sort of like a you know if a, a, a video vlog and it takes takes a while uh, takes a, a lot of time actually because it, it it I have to find the right music and and then the images and 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 put you know storyboard board them a certain way and all of that so and I don't know if it's of any great benefit to you folks and I thought, okay, maybe I should just not keep giving myself more um, work if it's not if it if it's if if it's me- meaningless basically um, for you folks. But I I, I still want to do them. But I thought what I'll do is just do them and post them separately, um, sort of just a mini um, video story. Right, I could do them as a short, or just um, do them just as a, as a, an inspired, creative way of telling a story. So, hope you all had, as I said, a wonderful Easter Sunday. And um, today, I thought I would take it easy, and we'll do Mondays. I'm trying to do um, more, be a little bit more organized in the way. I get this um, podcast uh, delivered to you and I recognize and I know that it is being sporadic Um, there isn't like every day or if I were to announce it's okay you can expect every other day Um, and that's one of the things I wanted to get under control for a while now and I haven't I haven't been able to because my work at the time, there was a lot of demand on me and it was just, I, I just could not find the time 
to get uh, you know the video out and when I had some time you know I wanted it to be done a certain way as I said you know the the intros would, would take hours to get um, done so I do apologize for that uh, it, it's been something that has been bothering me for for a while because I do want to have a certain con consistency and I do want you to know what to sort of um, expect a little bit um, so f I'm trying to schedule out and 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 see how um, and what I might be able to do and be realistic about it because I listen I have like a million and one ideas and things I want to do in my head and then when I start to do one of them right i then realize oh this is not going to take 20 minutes this actually is going to take hours to do and it's just again I'm, I'm not trying to say i'm just this this uptight person because i'm not but there's a certain um way i want to deliver what i bring to you what i may call the product uh, uh, I, 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 I want it to be a manifestation of what I can do at that time and moment, my best capability um, artistically or creatively and, and bring that to you. And I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know, like, if you, if you knew how many podcasts I've actually uh, taped and then before posting I will rewatch and just absolutely there be certain things that either bother me about it or I I, I can't stand or and I just decide no nope, not posting it and that interrupts again you know me not posting for four days and then posting two things that you know on the weekend or something and I don't want that to happen so I think I'm going to be a little bit more realistic with how I can manage my time and what I can or what I'll be able to deliver with um, a certain quality that I'll be happy with so I'm looking at Mondays right now and well today's Monday and thinking I either want to do Monday Monday um, comments so look at the comments you folks have have left for the for the week past or do them on Fridays right so it's either like at the beginning of the week or towards the end of the the working week uh, so I'm still sort of debating that which one or which you know and to do be concrete about having maybe three solid 30 minute um or 45 minute uh podcasts the other thing too that you know i've had to sort of re reevaluate is as i said one of these things for me it it, it takes hours to get to get done to put together um and when i look at the analytics of the channel um a lot of people are not that i would let me just not say a lot of a lot of people the majority of people are not watching uh, from end to end and i i completely understand that um people have time restrictions and maybe the topic is not so much of interest or maybe i i am i'm just boring as heck so or i'm being repetitive with a topic that they've already heard uh on and, and, and some of the other podcasts and that's one of the reasons why i try to find a different angle so sometimes you know you, you'll just be hearing the same topic be discussed and i'll try and find maybe an academic angle to bring to you folks or look at something differently um and maybe 
tackle it with another another side of an of an issue. Um, so there's been a lot of things I've been molding in my cabeza in in my head. So let's see what happens, right? So today, as I said, I'm going to press the button for the membership part. Um, please, if you'd like to join uh, the membership part, um, that'd be lovely. Um, I appreciate very much the support of the channel. Um, and if not, that's okay too. In regards to, you know, the amount of time you guys spend watching um, the stuff on Majesty's Sussex Report, it's it's not me. I'm not complaining or anything like like that. I'm just trying to be re realistic. And if I am doing content that is an hour um, or so or more 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 than that, and editing and all of that, it, it takes quite a lot of time. And if I know like you know the audience is not is not watching it, then you know, I need to reevaluate the time that is being spent and what, how am I spending it appropriately um, to maximize um, you folks and that you get the quality of uh, material and content that you that you expect. So, if you're only watching, let's say, 15 minutes on average, then I know, okay, people are dropping off after 15 minutes of watching. So maybe I can try. Not, not try. I have to just, just tailor content that is will will be um, maybe 20, 20 minutes, right? It's more quicker, digestible, um, faster, that sort of thing. I think one of my um, that I realized the other day. I kept thinking when I started the channel. You know, having people like Baron, who's who goes on live, and he he's just a he's just a miracle, and stays on for two, three hours or so on. I I sort of made that assumption that I needed to do um, to keep you folks sort of um, entertained, and uh, I I basically need need needed to do minimum like an hour of content. But I'm realizing that that's not the case, right? That you don't need an, an hour of content. The other thing too is that there's a lot of, I spend a lot of time editing. Um, I guess someone said to me, uh, someone in the messages said, oh, I didn't realize you you had a, a, a stutter. You, you, you know, you can barely hear anything. Let me tell you the secret. So I spend, so much time, like even this that I'm talking to right now, I can guarantee you I've edited this minimum four times. Um, sometimes I just leave it in because I'm just tired and I was like, okay, I, I, I don't want to do this again because I'll, I've, I've, I've spoken sometimes for about 10, 10 minutes. And when I re-listen, to it there there is there is a lot of you know but when i'm exhausted or tired or whatever and i'm just stu st I'm stuttering a lot i'll just delete it and, and do it again and then do it again and until i can get um the voice part with minimum amount of that sort of um in 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 interruption um so uh, there's a lot that goes on <laughs> um behind the, the behind the curtain i would say so i just wanted to update you folks on that so you know what is happening um i i i love having this channel i love um reading your feedback and comments and interactions and I, I love it that so many of you see the labor of love and and yeah I 
Okay, I'm going to just stop before I start to get emotional. And, um, okay, that's it. Thank you very much. It's always great to see you, Marcel. So why do you think that men are depressed? <sighs> Colin, to understand why men are depressed, we have to first talk about women. And I understand women. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you want to start with that. <laughs> no, Colin, like, I grew up with only women in my house, okay? It was me, my mom, and my sister. And then in high school, my mom's best friend and her daughter moved in. So it was just me and four women. And when that happens to you, Colin, when it's just you and four women, you have no choice. But to become the man of the house. Wrong. To become a woman. <laughs> I was a woman for many years, Colin. A proud Latina woman. <laughs> And I was living a double life, you know, because at school, I was captain of the soccer team, screaming at all the players, you better play defense today. And then I would get home and my mom would be like, Marcelo, how do I look? And I would be like, you look amazing, mommy. As a matter of fact, do me a favor, go back into your room and walk out again. I want to see you again. Where are you going? The White House? Is my mama going to meet the president? And how does this relate to men being depressed? <laughs> Because, Colin, women support each other. Men don't support each other. That's why they're depressed. A girl can tell her best friend anything, and she'll support it no matter what. A girl will tell her best friend. She'll be like, I'm dating this guy, and he robs banks. <laughs> and then her friend will be like, at least he has a passion. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you don't think that men are as supportive? No, not at all. That's why I don't go to the barber shop anymore, Colin. It's a negative energy in there. No one is happy to see you when you go to the barber shop. Every time I go, the guy's like, look who it is. We already told you, buddy, we can't make you taller. That's why, that's why a little prince like me goes to the salon, Colin. I get to the salon, Colin, and the lady's like, where have you been? And I'm like, I don't know. I missed you. <laughs> okay, the salon do be sounding kind of fire. It do. It do, Colin, it do. I'm just trying to say that women have support, okay? When a woman goes through a breakup, all her friends show up. When a guy goes through a breakup, his boys just act like his flight got delayed. <laughs> You'll be like, yo, I was in love with her, man. Out of nowhere, she left me. And my best friend will be like, damn. <laughs> that sucks, bro. <laughs> just go to Chili's and wait for the next one, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> And you would say this is the reason men are the most depressed they've ever been in history? Yes, and also a variety of other psychological and genetic issues, but they're not as funny and I don't have stand up on that. I hope you enjoy that. I find Marcelo really funny and um, just makes me laugh all the time. So before I head into the comments, I just want to give a quick um, shout out to the following people. Um, Marsha Williams, Delphine, Vinny, John Garcia, uh, Puzzle Dot, Ladyfoot, and um, Burrell, pa Patrio, Patrio, pa sorry, Patrioa, Patrioa, Marcel, Federica, uh, Vivian, Elizabeth, or, or Elizabeth, Sharon, Shirley, um, uh, what else I have here, Didi, Kiki, Morlone, Susie Q, Trini Love, Gloria Thomas, Mary, uh, Connie, Connie Balmer, um, Dolores Williams, Lydia Washington. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for feedback. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, Reba, um, Reba, <laughs> what's that? Um, Reba, Hi, and thank you so much. Uh, the comment that I'm uh, going to just read out um, is from Ellen, and Ellen writes, 
A royal expert is anyone with a British accent who appears on the on their television or writes articles for the tabloids and will do or say anything for the money, even attack their own race. Any person of color who has a show or appears on these networks are there to dispel any mention of racism. But it's not working for any of these um, house Negro. It's interesting to me how they get these shows and proceed to attack Duchess Megan. Um, interesting uh, uh, attack Duchess Megan verbally as if they know her because of their skin color. And yet, both experiences are different by birth, one being born in America and other in the UK. These people talk as if they met her for tea or something. Dr. Shola is warrior when invited on these shows because she won't play the, their games. She has defended Meghan Markle from the beginning and continue to do so, but the others are riding that racist money train. I read some of um, some where that's 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 a billion dollar business, the Hayden of the Sussexes, but especially Duchess Meghan and Prince Archie and Princess L Princess Lilbeth. Thank you for um, joining the Sussex family. Um, your platform is greatly appreciated. Much love and respect. Well, um, Elin, and I hope I'm pronouncing um, your handle correctly. Um, I I couldn't agree more. Why, why am I getting emotional? Like, <laughs> I okay. Let me address this getting emotion, em, emotional thing because I think sometimes people. I I don't know whether it's because I I am a sensitive person, but I. It's not like I I get emotional over everything. It's it's a human condition. Anything that has to do with the human condition, it absolutely, absolutely. Um, affects me. I, 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 I. It might have to do with being that that sick as a child, and not knowing whether I would be living, you know, to have the life that I have today. Um, well, just just to be alive. Period. And sitting in, you know, being in hospitals and being hooked up to things and just, just just looking at humanity. And as a child, I was always very quiet and very um, observant. And being in the hospital, you're seeing people sometimes at their worst in regards to, you know, they're there because of, of, an, of an emergency. But also you see people sometimes at their happiest because they're there perhaps because of the birth of of a of a child, so it's an incredible thing, and I get very much so affected with human stories, anything that has to do with people, and on both ends of the spectrum, whether we are being cruel, nasty, destructive, or whether we're being kind and lovely and loving and tender. And the story of the Sussexes, of, of, of Megan in particular, is, is, is a story that so many of us have either experienced or we have knowledge of it. And the thing that always not surprises me, because I think at this point, I have navigated enough um, intersectionalities in regards to ethnicity and race and gender identities and all that kind of stuff to be in a comfortable place where I'm able to analyze or to or to have observations 
and give a sort of informed opinion um, for the most part. And I am moved because I know what that pain feels like. I know what that pain feels like when you are being attacked not only by those that think you are too, and I'm going to use this word, uppity, right? Um, that they need to teach you your place, but also of people who you consider your own. It's the most, and you folks know this, it's, it's, it's tough. It's hard. It's, it's like being attacked by your own family. It's being attacked by those that you trust will have your back. And I've said this before, when I've heard anyone of color, any minority, um, start to criticize and say, well, and bring into the conversation colorism, it drives me bonkers. I get so angry. Because just because I may not have the same degree of discrimination or racism that you might have experienced, it doesn't mean I haven't experienced it. It doesn't mean it hasn't been applied to me. Right? So it is, it, it is in the interest of the powerful, of those that have control of the means and of the messaging to keep us ignorant. And there's no better way to keep us ignorant than to fight each other. And to use pathetic things like colorism for your self-identity to put down someone else. Listen, at I, I've said this before. I am the 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 the, the um, hue color that I am. Period. This is this this is what this is what my my mom's genes and my dad's genes decided to do, and what God decided that hey, this is what's going to happen to 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 Antonio. Bam! I came out. That this is it, right? This this color is not going anywhere. It's not going to jump off of my skin or something unless I have a particular um, condition or something like that. So this is with, by, by which I navigate the world. My cousin, cousins who are very dark, right? And we have very similar experiences in the world. And then within those experiences, we have difference in the way we might have been treated. But does that mean I need to discount my cousin's experience or that my cousin needs to discount mine? No. Not at all. We still had the experience. I was in, I, I, uh, we were in high, I was in high school and... Um, we were over at at one 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 of one of our one of my friends, and the discussion turned into something very heavy, right? We started talking about childhood experiences, growing up in these different countries. Because I had friends, and I still do, have friends from 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 different backgrounds, and 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 um, immigrated to Canada under very different conditions, like it, and. So one 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 person disclosed some some horrible things that had happened to her, and um, she, you know. Then did this this other person, he disclosed some stuff that had happened to him, and also by all by all means horrible. So then my other friend disclosed some stuff that had happened to. To um to her, and when she was disclosing the stuff that happened to her, my other friend, male, said, "Oh well, at least that, that only happened to you like twice." Now the thing that she disclosed, it, it is, it just seems to happen to you once, man. Okay, does that 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 is that is all I'll say. 
but it happened to her twice. And he started to compare his pain with hers. And I sat there for a few minutes completely confused as to why he was doing this. I couldn't understand why he would compare his, his pain is his pain. The degree to which his, he suffered his pain is the degree to which he sees it and suffers. But you can't say that her pain is less or the, 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 the trauma that she carries is less. Mind boggling to me. So we have these people, right, who are so starved within the community or within any community and they they sell out their own but this this is a complex issue it's not there isn't simple answers to it right because some people may argue and i had this discussion with um i was on a panel and we were talking about Black Lives Matter. And on the same panel, um, there was someone uh, who identifies as, as Black and queer. And the person said, the thing that hurts me is that I will go out and march for my Black skin color but my black brothers and sisters will not come out and march when I am beaten and because I'm queer. So he said, I have difficulties, you know, um, bringing these two things together and trying to find the peace somewhere there. He goes, because what people see first of me is my skin color. And this is him self-identifying a certain way. He goes, but the minute I open my mouth and I speak or my mannerism, then they know I'm queer. So how we support each other and the things that we say and how we do it could be very complex. But also if we go back into history, we see that, our, our, oh, before I go into all of that anyways, the perfect example is, um, was it Diango uh, on Jane or A Hundred Years of Slavery? One of the, one, the one that, um, with, um, Jimmy Fox and, you know, where, with, with, with the man, um, you know, because he's in the big house and he, 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 he obeys his master and he, 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 punishes the slaves even more than the master would, right? And there is, there's a name for it. You, you all know it, and there's an attitude to, to, to it also. The, it, it, it is a complex thing, but it still hurts. That's the point. It still hurts. Because you are sitting there. The same way how, how I said in the other podcast, how Nana went on, t on, on on her show or whatever and criticized another woman's, another black woman's hair. So with, with, with these world reporters or guests that are invited, it's sort of you playing, they're bringing you on to perform. They're bringing you on to be the, 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 oh, I almost said a certain rep, a certain, um, animal the one that that they had pictured as as you know archie leaving the whatever those freaking idiots it, it's 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 performative and you're absolutely right it's to give credibility right because oh look we have the token black person oh you see we have the token who's a, you better well, yeah we should stop giving out these welfare checks and you better but you know, pull up your boots and go play. Yeah, I don't know where black people are. Like, yeah, I am black, but I have my own mind. I don't need to be following the herd. No one is asking to follow the herd. But the ask is, the ask is, 
for you to stop being a performative puppet? Does he ask? Because I'll tell you this. When shove comes to push or push comes to shove or whatever that saying is, if the apocalypse happens or there's a zombie attack or any of that, I get it, but just 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 hear me out. They're not gonna defend you. They're not gonna put you onto their ark. They're not gonna give you a, a pass to go into the salvation vault or whatever it is. No, 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 no. You're there for a purpose. They don't care about you. Right? So sometimes you have to really think. You have to really think and say, okay, is this the way I want to make a few dollars? Is this the way I want to make some my am living? But I'll tell you, I've met enough people who really have that mentality, though. Really, really think it. And I also have met the people who have said to me many a times, like, you, you, you're not this and you're not that, you're not this. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You don't want me in the group? You don't want me in the group? I had, I remember at university, I joined, I'm not going to say the name of the group, but um, I joined the group, excited to be, to be there. I left the group after a month because I was having... And maybe this is, these are my own issues, but it was we were in, reinforcing every freaking stereotype that exists of the community. The behavior was one that I I, I was like, why, why this performative behavior? Why give them the satisfaction? I don't I don't get it. Right? Or the way some of the guys would, would speak to the women. And I'm like, hey, buddy, hey, 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 calm down there. This is not, this is not the way we speak to women. Right? So, oh, there's a lot to unpack there, right? And there's a lot for us to really examine. It's, it's sad. It's really sad. Um, but it exists. And we keep doing it to each other. We keep doing it. Some more shout out to Angela um, Simmons, Angela or Angela, um, Sugar Plum K, Demo Morris, Phil, uh, Phyllis uh, New Morning, Rebecca Joseph, Burrell Brown. Maggie Jo, Beverly McCaskill, um, Susie Q, Cydia, Sharifia, Lynn, uh, Rebecca, or Rebecca Author, and Jean Reed. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you for your continued support. And um, here is the other comment. And this one is was written by uh, Federica. And Federica, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I summarized it. So uh, I hope I do justice in the summary. So this is what Fe Federica wrote. Um, well, sorry, the summary of what Federica wrote. Um, this true story revolves around a significant conversation initiated by an eight-year-old mixed race boy following Barack Obama's election as US president. Inspired by Obama's victory, the boy confidently stated in his German school that anyone, including himself, could become the Chancellor of Germany. His claim was met with skepticism from his German classmates, rooted in a belief that such positions were implicitly reserved for white individuals. However, the boy... Um, the boy... Uh, the boy countered his his. Sorry, guys. Um, the boy countered this notion by re referencing Philip Rosler, 
a Vietnamese-born vice chancellor of Germany and discussing the concept of nationality and e e e eligibility in German politics, highlighting that there were no restrictions based on race or birthplace for becoming chancellor. The boys' teachers supported his view, enlightening the class that political ambitions were not constrained by race, gender, or educational background. This revelation sparked a broader, a broader discussion among the students and was eventually brought to the attention of their parents, some of whom were surprised or even dismisses, dismissive of, 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 of the idea. However, the story took a turn when it was announced that Minister Ursula van der Leyen would be visiting a newly built mosque in their community, further challenging the prevailing notion of integration and uh, representation in Germany. This event underscored the message that aspirations for political leadership were accessible to all, regardless of background. The story concludes with a uplifted note that several students of Turkish and Russian descent, inspired by these discussions, have since engaged in local politics. Ugh. Um, challenging the uh, challenging and changing the narrative around who is deemed suitable for political roles in Germany. This tale not only showcases the impact of, uh, of encouraging inclusive dialogues, but also reflects a change in societal landscape where foolish notions, <laughs> thank you Federica, um, can indeed become powerful catalyst for change. Federica, when I read your comment, I am not going to lie to you. I was in tears halfway through it because I I am an educator. Um, I, I have two, two degrees and one of them is um, an educator. And I, I taught in, I taught high school for a year um, but I also did um, uh, volunteer um, at a after school for very very young kids um, so I, I did I did some volunteering there and I also did volunteering in an elementary school um, and you know when people say representation matters representation matters right because it doesn't matter how much um how should I should I shouldn't say that how much it, it when children ask questions I I know this because I used to be one of them there is a genuine curiosity as to trying to understand the world the way we think it is versus the way it actually is. Because a child is not born with racism. A child is not born with a knowledge of sexism. A child is not born with a knowledge of discrimination against um, people who may identify a certain way or um, a, a child is not born with homophobia. A child is not born um, calling people names. All of that is learned. We teach it. Right? We teach it. And I remember as a child, well, not, not even as, as a child, because I never questioned it. I questioned it more when I was a teenager. 
as a teen, I was watching telenovela. It, it's sort of like you know the equivalent of soap, soap, soap operas, and I don't know why this particular telenovela. And I really, I really enjoyed it. It was good. We, you know, the entire family watched it. And out of nowhere, I said to my, my, my family, my parents, my my brothers, we were all watch watching. I said, I said, isn't it strange? Is it just me? Or it's always the the darker skin, black actors. That are always the chauffeur, the gardener, the cooks, the servants, the criminals. And it didn't occur to me until that moment that the ones in the soap operas that were the, you know, the rich people or the or or the dam the dam damsel in distress, e e even if it was you know showing a poor family, right? They were always very, very light-skinned Latinos or or descendant of of European descent. Basically, it had never occurred to me. I just, in my head, I guess, that was just normal, and it's not, because you receive a certain message telling you something. I think it's so beautiful, so beautiful. You know that he had that sort of instinct to 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 to, to and I didn't get into the other parts that you talk about. You know the 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 um, anyways. I'm not going to mention it, but it really brought tears to my. Well, I didn't just brought tears. I I cried. <laughs> it because even in today's age. You know, it's it's twenty twenty four, and you know what's a sad thing? We'll still be asking the same questions in twenty thirty, in twenty forty. You know, I would like to have the hope that 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 it's not going to be that way. That every child, every person can actually aspire to any position in society, and that the structures within our society will assist and not create roadblocks, challenges. You know, we we have to see ourselves with the potential to become. I remember, and you folks may too, The Little Mermaid. The controversy. The controversy that came up when Disney announced that Haley Bailey was going to play this fictional character of The Little Mermaid. All this stuff that came up. Well, a, a mermaid cannot be black. Like, there's never been a black mermaid. It's a fictional character. Let me repeat. Fictional character. It, 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 and, and I would watch some of these reaction videos. And it was just so appalling because people would justify their racism. And I mean... All types of people. This wasn't just like backlash from like one one little section or or a certain majority or anything. This was this was people who were like, well, I was five years old when I saw the Little Mermaid, and you know, this is what it's always been for me, and that's where it should stay. And um, you know, I'm sure whatever. Like I'm not being racist or anything, but you know, Little Mermaid is Ariel with the red hair and this and that. And I'm thinking, brother. Are, are you serious? Are, are you really serious right now? It's 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 just appalling to me, right? 
these constructs that we hold on to and we just dig our heels into them and 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 not wanting to change and this is what i said in the last podcast about these royal reporters right they 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 are at, at they they have an allergy to to anything that is to um change right they they don't want things to progress they don't want things to move forward no 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 none of that so that was so beautiful to know that president obama and you know the amount of kids and the amount of people that were inspired just by him even going up for the nomination i remember when um president barack obama won and him and his family were work, were walking out you know and michelle obama is absolutely beautiful um i think it was a red dress with a with a i think i'm not sure um i have flashes of memories in my head and i remember just him walking out to to oh it was wrong with me <laughs> this is like <laughs> Emotional Mondays at Majesty Sussex Report. Emotional Mondays, where Antonio cries after every every story. <laughs> that is what it's going to be. <laughs> Emotional Mondays. Don't miss it. <laughs> um, you know, watching Oprah crying, watching like all these very famous people there, and I, I just, I, 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 I weeped. I cried because I I thought about the possibilities. Not to say now this is possible. No, I just thought of the possibilities that there is someone, there is a there is a boy, there's a girl, there's a child, there is there is a teenager that is looking at this. And I don't mean just a person of color or a minority. I mean all of them. All of them. People of the human race looking at that monumental achievement. And a white person, a white teenager, a white young, young, young child can have now stamped in their brain, in their consciousness, that the possibility of a president being of mixed race, identifiable as black, can hold the highest office in the United States of America. You know? And that is where the change, that's why, like when things would happen with Obama, I, I was like, you know what? The, the man is trying to do his best. He's the first of his kind. He's trying to do his best. Because for me, it wasn't about him anymore. It was about those children, those teenagers that saw that. And now they have an additional possibility stamped in their path. Oh, just incredible. Federica, thank you so much for sharing that, 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 that story. Folks, you can go read it yourself. Um, it was really great. Really, really, really great. And to hear also that the, the, the Turkish and um, Russian kids also being inspired by that and thinking, oh, you mean we can, we, I can too? Oh, isn't that so beautiful? So great, so great. A quick correction. I said um, Haley Bailey. It's Halle Bailey. Um, so it's not Haley, it's Halle Bailey. Thank you. I was drifting, now I'm shifting gears Now I got to wait the lights on Right now this is my time, this is gonna be my year I was gone a minute, now I'm back Busy changing, breaking from the pack Now I'm waiting on a chance, so I'm making my own plans The world's gonna have to deal with that
This is what I always dreamed about I'm over being scared, let them talk and let them stare Go tell them that my time is now The pack. Now I'm in first place, used to dream about this life Now I see it in my face, hard work pays off Gotta go, gotta get it, eyes on the prize Never worry about the critics, I didn't put it on my time Put in all my work, made it through the storm Yeah, we came up from the dirt, it's go time, go time Show them what I got, long time coming This time won't stop from the crowd I'ma stand out, no handouts Taking on the world, so look at me now This is just the beginning, progress still growing They said I couldn't do it, so I guess I gotta show them now I feel unstoppable, now I'm feeling good Look at how I'm winning and they didn't think I would But I didn't hold back and the odds were all stacked Now I'm playing this song and I tell them